It's so sad that Mike Tyson has got to do this fight. This is what I wrote on Instagram and someone commented saying he doesn't have to do it, he's choosing to do it. And then I thought, you know, you're right. He is choosing to do it, but why is he choosing to do it? Well, he's doing it for one reason. <laughs> Mike Tyson's intense training regimen, depicted in a captivating montage, has gripped global audiences as he readies for his highly anticipated face-off with Jake Paul on July 20th. Despite widespread favoritism towards Iron Mike, Tony Jeffrey sheds light on Tyson's true motivation, suggesting it's driven primarily by the promise of a significant payday. Jeffrey expresses disappointment, arguing that a legend like Tyson, at 57, should rely on his legacy rather than financial incentives. Criticism against Jake Paul from the combat sports community is mounting, with UFC star Shan Strickland bluntly labeling him as disgraceful and embodying weakness. Strickland finds it appalling that Paul holds any platform at all. While talk of a potential bout between Paul and Tyson generates excitement, scrutiny of Tyson's recent training footage raises undisclosed doubts about his readiness for a comeback. Tyson's resurgence at 57 has garnered interest beyond boxing circles, with his unmatched punching power targeting Jake Paul, sparking anticipation for their clash. Despite skepticism surrounding his return, Tyson's comeback injects fresh excitement into boxing, hinting at a showdown bridging generations. It's a tale rich in symbolism, a clash of eras, a test of legacy, and a quest for relevance in the ever-changing world of boxing. Yet, doubts persist regarding the authenticity of Mike Tyson's readiness showcased in his training videos. Professional boxer Campbell Hatton represents a faction skeptical of Tyson's public displays, suggesting they prioritize spectacle over genuine fighting abilities. Hatton's concerns, expressed in an interview with TalkSport, advise against getting swept up in Tyson's imposing presence. At 57 years old, questions arise about Tyson's endurance and ability to absorb punches. Hatton worries that a loss, especially to someone like Jake Paul, could disillusion young fans inspired by Tyson's legacy. If Paul were to win, exploiting Tyson's age and decreased resilience, it might unjustly elevate Paul in the eyes of impressionable viewers, distorting their perception of the sport. The discussion around Tyson's training videos prompts deeper thoughts on sports comebacks, challenging conventional ideas about aging athletes and stretching the limits of what's possible. Tyson's return to the ring adds another intriguing chapter to his remarkable story of overcoming challenges. Yet, amidst the excitement, there are valid concerns about the risks involved in returning to a demanding sport. While some see Tyson's comeback as a testament to his resilience and a chance to reshape his career, others worry about the tough challenges he might face, especially against opponents like Jake Paul, who, despite lacking Tyson's experience, still pose significant threats. Critics like Hatton caution against nostalgia's pull, focusing on the harsh realities of professional sports, especially combat sports. They worry that the excitement over Tyson's potential comeback might overshadow genuine concerns about his health and what it means for athletes' longevity in such demanding fields. Former boxer Tony Jeffrey analyzed Tyson's recent training footage, noting aspects of his physical condition that could affect his upcoming fight against Jake Paul. Jeffrey highlighted Tyson's use of medicine ball slams to enhance explosive power, reminiscent of Ivan Drago's training in Rocky. He also speculated about potential equipment, like wires, used to gauge Tyson's strength and power output during exercises. He's getting paid so much money to do this, so that tells me he's getting bought. So again, it is sad that someone like Mike Tyson can get bought, because this guy is an absolute legend. He shouldn't be able to get bought like this. He's 57 years old. He needs to be enjoying retirement. Jeffrey suggests these metrics could track energy expenditure advancements and Tyson's recuperation. He criticizes the training footage's assembly of short segments, noting that while Tyson appears dominant briefly, it may not reflect his overall readiness for a bout. Jeffrey stresses the need for a thorough examination of Tyson's performance, cautioning against hasty conclusions. He advocates for a comprehensive view of Tyson's training, including entire rounds, to assess his sustained performance accurately. Jeffrey admires Tyson's unwavering intensity, highlighting a moment where his fierce demeanor and assertiveness demonstrate psychological strength. He underscores the importance of Tyson's intense gaze and demeanor, 
suggesting it remains formidable. Don't think that I've got the wealth that Mike Tyson's got, but if someone offered me $20 million to fight Jake Paul, I would say no, because I care too much about me brain health, about me children, about me family, where it seems like he is being bored, and I'm not trying to disrespect the man. I absolutely love the man. It's just so bloody sad. Jeffrey's analysis emphasizes Tyson's intimidating presence, but cautions against assuming his readiness solely from edited footage. He points out the difference between flashy clips and the overall endurance needed for real boxing matches. Concerns extend beyond the matchup, with experts like Bernard Hopkins fearing damage to Tyson's legacy and the sport's integrity. Hopkins views Tyson's bout with Jake Paul as a setback for the boxing legend, putting his illustrious career at risk. I don't like it. Is it because of the... Jay, I, I look at Mike, it's like, I look at him different in a way of my era, like I, people looked at Ali. And I looked at Ali different too, but not too many people, Marvin Hagler, I, Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Robinson. The sentiment implies that Tyson risks damaging his prestige by choosing to fight Jake Paul, an inexperienced opponent from the world of social media. Tyson's legacy is based on epic battles and remarkable talent, and facing Paul may be seen as undermining the respect he commands in boxing. Hopkins raises doubts about the caliber of the competition and the importance of upholding boxing's history and competitive essence. There's a debate about how celebrity matches affect the sport's integrity and public perception, highlighting broader implications for boxing within the community. Hopkins' remarks suggest concern that celebrity matches could dilute the serious competitive essence of boxing. His perspective likely reflects a deep respect for boxing as a discipline rooted in tradition and requiring adherence to high competitive standards. Tyson's participation in this fight might be viewed as deviating from these fundamental principles, underscoring the broader implications of such matchups within the sport. While Tyson's return to the ring is captivating, the realities of the sport, coupled with Jake Paul's strategic advantages, cast doubt on the benefits of this fight for boxing. It highlights the clash between legacy and innovation as the sport evolves. Nevertheless, the bout is expected to draw significant attention and revenue. Regarding Tyson's training footage, opinions vary on whether he's adequately prepared to face Jake Paul's youthful energy. What are your thoughts on Tyson's readiness? Share your comments below, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content. Thank you for watching.